struggled a bit here this morning, but looking to get back on track here and get the job done. Had the bat out and looked like that pitch split the uprights. You might see Kyle Crawford again say, wow, on the pitch. You're saying inside. I think it was inside. I think that Crawford is looking to try to get every advantage he can. I think that was definitely a ball. Clark turns squares early, and this one is down low. Bunts on again, and this one is pop foul again, and this one will get out of play down the left side. And unable to get the job done, Brian Clark will have to advance him the fun way, as they say. And with that said, important that you see the veteran Sanford go out just for a very quick chat and a quick reminder to Kyle Crawford about the scenario here. Two and two on Clark. Daniel Dalton out at first with an infield single. And this one is laced through the right side. Dalton, coast to coast, standing up. And they're going to chase Brian Clark back to first base. Good bit of hitting there by Brian Clark. Turned on an inside pitch and drilled it out to right field. Well, he certainly did it the fun way. And that was the bubble way, I guess, as he decided he wasn't going to lay it down. That he wanted to advance the runner all the way to third. So good piece of hitting there and a good heads up play from Nick Shales to come over and take that cutoff as you saw Clark was itching to take the extra base had that cutoff missed its spot and Shales came over covered and that's why the runners are on the corners and not second and third. A meeting at the mound with the coaching staff for the Mastodons Justin Schofield got up in a hurry and the question was asked in between innings when do we see Schofield is it right now? Because he went down and threw 10 quick pitches, and I think it's is going to be Schofield's time. Well, that's an interesting decision, certainly. And I'm not sure if it's considered a rush decision or not, if they hadn't talked about it before. But you had to figure that there's going to be a short leash. And with this Bulldogs team already having played a game, guys are warmed up already as far as seeing pitches and, you know, feeling comfortable up there. They don't have to sort of get into game mode and that was one of the advantages that the Bulldogs have coming in. And that's going to be it. As you see, Schofield's going to take the hill. Well, Kyle Crawford pretty upset with himself coming off the field. I'm sure he would have liked to have gotten through this inning before turning the ball over to Schofield. But here in the fourth, back-to-back -back hits with runners on the corners and Steven Strap coming to the plate. That will be it for the righty. Schofield, he got up in a hurry, Lance, because I looked down at the end of the last inning and there was nobody warming up. He's going to get the last of his warm-up pitches in here. We'll take a break and pick up this storyline when we come back. in the Mastodons lineup, Justin Schofield, number 41, now pitching. Justin Schofield into the game to replace Kyle Crawford. Runners on the corners, not the ideal situation to come into. Leo Myers, Myers rather, pardon me, on to run for Brian Clark out at first base.
Schofield kicks, delivers, and blows one right past Steven Strap. This will be a significant increase in velocity from Crawford up to Schofield. Infield, at least at second base, Patrick Stewart is in. Shales now takes two or three steps forward at shortstop. And just upstairs, one ball, one strike. Always tough to come in when there's a man on third base here. May not be as warm as you usually are. Certainly not as comfortable with that landing area and susceptible to wild pitches. Called strike on the outside corner. Strap not enthused by that call. I think that pitch had a late break on it, but not quite sure that it was able to catch any part of the white, but... Schofield, a big exhale, and just off the outside corner. Two balls, two strikes. Steven Strap at the plate. Runners on the corners for the Kelly's Pub, Molson Bulldogs. Scoreless here in the fourth inning, the top of the fourth. And they are looking to try to jump out in front of the East Hans Mastodons. Called strike three. Strap literally hopping mad over that call. Well, I think he's got good reason to be. I think that was a tough pitch to strike out on. One that was questionably out of the zone. And you certainly feel for Stephen Strap, who's been hitting the ball a ton. And you got to figure that he's had a good eye of late. And that, of course, call did not go in his favor. Mark Lewis will step in. and had his first look at Kyle Crawford. Now he gets his first look at Justin Schofield. And just off, apparently, the outside corner and a long look in from Justin Schofield. Well, if you're not getting the in or you're getting the in, you're probably not going to get the out and vice versa. So for Scof to want both is very typical of a pitcher. And this one just off the inside corner. And he moved Mark Lewis back off the plate with that one. But regardless, it's now 2-0. and And fouled off. A good hack by Mark Lewis. And, you know, it's been a long time coming for Mark over the last couple of weeks. And you see him with a big deep breath there in just outside the batter's box. He would love to get a key RBI here for his Kelly's pub team. Schofield will give this new ball that he's been handed a bit of a rub down. Quick nod on the signs. And downstairs, and a good job by Sanford to block that one on the short hop. Three and one to Mark Lewis. A good hitter's count here. Can't groove one. Even to a guy who's been struggling a little bit, you can't groove one. And ball four. Schofield loads the bases. Good at bat for Mark Lewis. A couple of close pitches he managed to take and another opportunity for Kelly's Bulldogs and you got to figure that these opportunities may run out eventually. Now a good time to push a run across the board. Very good scenario with the bags full and just one out. Well, Eddie Heffernan is going to get the opportunity to go and swing away. He has been struggling of late as well. And Andrew Wade will switch up with Mark Lewis. So Wade will go be running for Mark out at first base.
And Heffern with plenty of speed, but he has chased a lot of rise balls up in the eyes here this week and most recently in his last at bat. Well, good time here for Heffern to settle in and make Schofield throw him strikes. Second time, the bases have been loaded for Kelly's Pub. They got nothing out of it in the second inning. And a called strike on Heffer and that pitch on the inside corner. One down in the inning. Bases loaded for Kelly's Pub. Infield drawn in for the Mastodons chasing downstairs for strike two. Not the pitch you want to swing at, that one in the dirt, but pretty easy to say up here in the broadcast with a different story when you're in the batter's box. Owen two to Hefferin. Set up is outside, and this one is laced out to left. Why not? Dives, catches. Here's the throw. It's cut off by Archibald, and give Eddie Hefferin an RBI. Good piece of hitting from Hefferin. I think that Justin Schofield may have gotten a little complacent and caught too much of that plate with the 0-2 pitch, and Hefferin made him pay with a sack fly out there. And I tell you, when you look at it, Tyler why not had to make a good grab to haul that in or that could have potentially been extra bases. That was a very good grab by why not had to come in and the ball was tailing away from him too and had to lay out and then recognize that he still got to get up to his feet and make a good throw to the infield. They weren't going to get Daniel Dalton who runs very well at the plate and that was a good job to make the cut by Donnelly Archibald tracking the ball around the diamond as a good first baseman does and he keeps Liam Myers out at second base but back to the top of the shot for his third at bat of the game is Colin Walsh and he looks at called strike one Dalton's run charge to Kyle Crawford Myers who is pinch running for Brian Clark still belongs to Crawford as well And a 45-footer from Schofield is blocked by Sanford. One ball, one strike. Wall singled and then was tagged out later on a ground ball and then popped up to third base. Good crowd on hand here with the local team in the bronze medal game. Poured in over the inside corner again, and Schofield seems to really like that left side of the plate as we look at it, Lance. Well, I think he feels comfortable there, and that's where he likes to go. If he can get that hard drop over the outer half of the plate to right, he's, he's very effective, and it's a tough pitch to hit. Chopped on the infield, Shields retreats and makes the strong throw over to first for the final out of the inning. But the Kelly's Pub Molson Bulldogs score one in the top of the fourth. They'll lead as we head to the home half. Stay with us. Kelly's Pub Eatery is the official concessions provider, providing great food and great service. in the top of the fourth inning. The first baseman, number 12, John Lee Archibald.
Bottom of the fourth inning, Donnelly Archibald to lead things off for the Mastodons. They now trail one to nothing and are fortunate really, we think up here in the booth, Lance, that they only gave up one in that spot. Well, for sure. You had a good play from Why Not and then again your defensive play from Nick Shales. So defense prevalent here and just the giving up that one run that was certainly well earned. So a good job there when you think about what the Mastodons could have potentially been fallen behind by. So defense a key here and a one run ball game can make that one run up with one swing of the bat. Arch with a ground ball out to Daniel Dalton leading off the second inning. And a little bit symmetrical here on the scorebook as Nick Shales has ended both the first and the third innings and both by way of strikeout as this one is lifted way up in the air out to right. Calling for it is Andrew Wade and he'll settle under it before the Pigeons get to it. Now batting the center fielder, number 44. Joel Eisner. Joel Eisner, who rocketed a ground ball right past Mark Lewis at third base, just out of reach to his left. And the last couple of balls that Joel Eisner has hit have been screamers. Certainly hitting the ball well here, and has been this week. That inside corner to righties, that seems to be a popular place for the pitchers to go right now. They're both getting the call off the dish. And if you're getting that call, no need to change it. It's working for you, and if anything, you want to extend it. Now trying to go outside and see if they can get that call off the dish the other way, but it's been pretty much the left side of the dish as you, the viewer, look at it. People continuing to stream into Caribou Park here. Setup is outside. Fishing goes Joel Eisner. And one ball, two strikes to the five batter in the Mastodons lineup. Spent a lot of time in the four hole earlier in the week. And not getting that corner, not quite yet. Kyle Linton continues to throw casually down in the bullpen for the Bulldogs. Still has the jacket and the hoodie on. You'll know it's serious when he gets down to the jersey. Just off that popular inside corner. Two balls, three balls, two strikes to Joel Eisner. Kelly's Pub trying to get back to the championship game. They were there two years ago. Chasing upstairs, Joel Eisner down on strikes for the second out of the inning. That will bring up Jean-Luc Picard, better known as Charles Xavier or Patrick Stewart in his civilian disguise. Too bad for Eisner not able to finish up on what was a very good at bat up until that last pitch where he chased it out of the zone. Inside, called a strike. Stewart has a quick look back. And again, Lance, why change the formula if it's working for you? Keep going there. That's exactly it. Upstairs. And this will be foul back out of play here. All the other games are done. All the attention now on Diamond 1. 
the Masters tournament wrapping up in the game before this one. And again, Newfoundland and Labrador taking the gold medal in that one. The three cheers pub team. Extra innings. Had to go to extra for the gold medal. Swing and a miss. Down goes Stewart. Walsh strikes out last two. And they'll maintain that lead as we go to the top of the fifth. The slide to five coming up. that the 50-50 tickets will be shutting down very shortly and the uh, prize is going to be in excess of $1,000. Also, due to technical issues, we will not be distributing a tournament newsletter today. All newsletters will be available on the tournament website in the coming days. Number 10, Jeff Eagle. Jeff Evely will get his first look at Justin Schofield here in the top of the fifth inning as they start the slide to five. Kelly's Pub in a tight one nothing ball game over the East Hans Mastodons of Nova Scotia. 2-3-4 for the Kelly's Pub Bulldogs. And Schofield pours in a strike. Got to figure that Kelly's Pub is going to run out of opportunities sometime. Haven't been able to capitalize yet. Uh, sorry, they were able to push one across, but really they should be leading this game by good three, four runs at the very least if they got some timely hitting. But the fact that they are on the board and putting the pressure on the Mastodons is probably where they want to be. Well, I think we've said that they've left six or seven runners on over the course of the game so far. and uh, Usually that's not a recipe for success. But they're clinging to that one nothing lead right now. Setup is outside. They go there, but it's off the plate. Two balls, two strikes. And there's been a lot of deep counts again, Lance. A lot of two and two, three and two over the course of the game. Not very many quick at bats. Chases after the changeup from Schofield. That's a good one. First one I think we've seen from Schofield so far. Yep, and it came at a good time. Not if you're Jeff Evely, though. But if you are a member of the Mastodons, you will say that timing is everything and good pitch from Scof. Matthew Waugh walked and then grounded out. And we know that Matthew was not very happy with the results of his last at bat. There were a couple of pitches that uh, perhaps he felt he could have gone after or handled better. And turns and squares, but pulls the bat back. Had a perfect bunt for a base hit in the earlier game this morning. And a dual threat is Matty Waugh. And he certainly kept the wrestlers' defense off balance. They didn't know what he was going to do. And Schofield misses in with this one. So 2-0, and oh, a very good hitter's count to the very dangerous Matthew Waugh. This is the 10th game of the tournament already for the Kelly's Pub Bulldogs. 
And this one is laced underneath the glove of a diving Nick Shales and a big turn by Matthew Waugh and a clap of the hands, and he'll be happy with that base hit. Well, certainly a much better at bat than he had the last time, and Matty Waugh aggressive and hitting the ball hard, which is what we're used to seeing from him. So Ryan Kirk, who twice has grounded out to Nick Shales, will look to resume his previous hot hitting. Only the one one two three inning for Kelly's Pub, that was in the third. They've had base runners aboard every other inning. And usually that means that the opposition is living on borrowed time, but doesn't seem that way with the Mastodons. They seem pretty confident as though a one-run deficit's not going to worry On them. the move is Matty Waugh. Schofield, I thought he was going to slow that one down. and might have deflected it at the best, but Matthew Waugh goes coast to coast, and Ryan Kirk continues to stay hot, taking that pitch right back where it came from, and that's two right back up the middle for Kelly's Pub here in the fifth. Good piece of hitting there from Kirk as he picks up his first hit of the ball game. And sometimes it's important that you take what the pitcher gives you and go with the pitch. And that's exactly what you saw there from Ryan Kirk taking it right back up the middle. Daniel Dalton, a double and a single. Now both of those came against Kyle Crawford. Well, Daniel Dalton, since his return from that one-game suspension, has been phenomenal. He has done a little of everything. His defense has been very tight, and offensively, he has been a force. He's running the bases well and very aggressive up there. Everybody else was set to go except for the third base coach and Matthew Waugh who were deep in discussion and the umpire had to call time to get Matty back on the back. Inside from Schofield, a little too much inside, can't get that corner just yet, not that far over. Patrick Stewart again is well inside the baseline at second base, Shales on the baseline at short. And outside, good job there by Jason Sanford to track that one down before it got to the screen. And Jason Sanford, he looks like he's at the end of a long week here too. Seems to be walking very gingerly back to in behind home plate. A lot of up and down for the catchers here. A lot of games in a very compressed period of time. That one's upstairs. Well, toughest position on the diamond, and Jason has had himself a long and, I would say, prosperous season. He certainly has been in the mix in quite a few championships, tournament-wise and internationally, so it's going to take its wear and tear on you. There's a called strike, so three and one now, and Dalton thought he had worked a walk which although you don't always want to load the bases, wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing. And this one is chopped foul, so we're going to go to a full count. You see Dalton there asking if that was going to be ball four, and I think the, the answer to that question should always be, if you're asking, then it probably was. Yep, that's probably the answer that you should get. One down here in the inning, runners on the corners, and a bit of an off-speed drop ball from Schofield in the inside corner and fouled into the screen by Dalton, or hooked into the screen, I should say. A good pitch from Schofield. Not a whole lot you're going to do with that inside pitch anyway except what Dalton did, and that was foul it back. At the, the only other option would be to hit a weak ground ball back to the pitcher. 
Matty Watt third, Ryan Kirk at first. Chopper, they're going to have the contact play on, and Matty Watt dead on arrival. Don't like the contact play there, particularly with only one out. That ball's got to get through somewhere. You just cut down and another base running error, I think, or perhaps a coaching call error by the Kelly's Pub Bulldogs. Well, I know that the bases are loaded, but there's one place that you don't rush, and that's when it's hit back to the pitcher. But at the same time, you had to go, and the batter swung the bat and made contact. Matty Waugh had to go with the force at home, and unfortunately, it didn't work out that way. No. And I apologize. You're right, Blair, that he didn't have to go, and... So the fielder's choice, and Matthew Waugh will go right back out to second base, get another crack at it, as he will go run for Ryan Kirk, who advanced up to second on the play. And Brian Clark at the plate. And that pitch, I don't know where that pitch missed, to be honest. But it's 1-0 and on Brian Bubba Clark. And two down here now in the inning. Runners at first and second. And there's a called strike on the outside corner. Be a good time for a clutch here from Clark. He's having himself a good ball game with a hit and a walk. And this one foul back out of play. They're a strike away from getting out of yet another jam. And they've been dodging bullets out there all afternoon, have the East Hans Mastodons. Kelly's Pub have only been able to push across a lone run. But they've had a couple of what I think we both think are base running mistakes and have taken themselves out of innings and have run into outs unnecessarily. Off the plate, two balls, two strikes. Steven Strap stands on deck if it gets that far. At first, we got to deal with Brian Clark. Change up, and that's a real good job. Again, you could almost put that on a loop by Jason Sanford to keep that ball in front. Well, if he doesn't, then that will change the complexion of this at bat. It would be runners at second and third with two away and instead of first and second. So a good job by the veteran. And even though Sanford looks like he's laboring just a bit, he's certainly a gamer and continues to get the job done behind the dish. He keeps the force in play. 3-2 pitch. Here's a chopper, and that will be foul down the left side. And certainly no sign of fatigue there as Sanford was quickly out of the crouch and was the first one to that ball halfway down the third baseline. Key at bat here in the game, top of the fifth inning. Kelly's Pub would dearly love to extend this one to nothing lead. Brian Bubba Clark at the plate. Justin Schofield on the board has shown him just about everything that he's got. We've seen the rise, the drop, the change. I don't know if he's got the through the legs pitch, maybe behind the back. Well, we tried the fastball down the middle, and that one's fouled straight back to the screen. Might not want to groove that one like that again as Clark just missed that pitch. Well, I think that was a rise ball that didn't really move much from Schofield. Now, he's got the velocity to maybe get away with that once. You won't throw that pitch again to Brian Clark. Setup is outside. And here's a chopper on the infield. Nick Shales will have to turn across the body and throw and just get Brian Clark over at first base. 
Good play from Nick Shales. Caught that ball the right way and quick release. It's in and out of his hand in a hurry, and that's why he's all world. Mastodons continue to dodge the bullets here. We'll continue the slide to five. Kelly's Pub one, Mastodons no score. Stay with us, Ballpark Broadcasting. As the slide to five continues into the home half of the inning, it's seven, eight, nine for the Mastodons coming to the plate. Jonah Wright, Aaron Harvey, and Cody Anthony. Colin Walsh back out on the board for Kelly's Pub. He was in the dugout for a long time as yet again his Kelly's Pub Molson Bulldogs have a long inning at the plate and yet again they don't come away with anything. Another squandered opportunity and two more base runners left aboard by the Bulldogs. This one is laced just foul as it kicks up some dirt instead of grass down the left side. Jonah right turn on a pitch for sure. Just unfortunately not able to keep it between the lines. And that's fortunate for the Bulldogs. Very fortunate because Jonah Wright has had his struggles here over the course of the week. A ground ball to the shortstop in his last trip. And a long look in and a smile from Colin Walsh. One ball, two strikes. And this one is pulled foul by Wright. Making some contact, Lance, but just can't keep it in between the lines. No, and that's, um, of course, you got to give credit to Colin Walsh about that. I'm not so sure that that long pause and looking in at the umpire at this stage of the game is a good idea. But he came back with a good pitch and, again, right, not able to keep the ball in fair territory. And uh, here's a little flare off the glove of Daniel Dalton and aboard with a base hit, at least in my eyes, is Jonah Wright. Well, I mean, you're going to give him a base hit on that, but really and truly, Dalton should have had that. He was able to track it down, good speed, but just eluded the entire glove. So Jonah Wright, though, able to keep that one between the lines, and hence the reason he's standing on first base. Well, I'm going to go with base hit, but uh, it, it could easily be scored an error. Turns and squares does Aaron Harvey, and the ball right past him. Well, I agree and gave him a base hit on that. I just felt, though, that Dalton, with his speed, got there in, in, in time. He was just not able to close close it in and haul it down. Clark creeps right in. He's in Harvey's back pocket practically. Certainly doesn't get much closer than that with the exception of the catcher and the umpire. (laughs) 
if, if Aaron Harvey ever decided to take a half swing, Brian Clark, I hope, has got the reflexes turned up to 11 because he is going to need them. Well, he certainly seems ready. And swinging away this time. So one ball, two strikes to Aaron Harvey. The bunt was on. They took it off. And perhaps taking it off, recognizing where they are in the order. The nine batter, Cody Anthony, haven't gotten any production out of Cody since he's been drawn into the lineup. And, you know, he's in a bit of a tough spot here. Called strike three. Haven't seen a lot of called strikes on that side of the plate, but down goes Aaron Harvey, and that will bring up Cody Anthony. Cody was a late addition to the lineup, and actually we're going to get a pinch hitter here as Jay Duffy will give it a go here with that troublesome knee. And I think this is, uh, this is a good opportunity here to at least let Duffy have a swing. Well, again, it could be one of those scenarios where the knee's feeling okay right now, and you warm up a bit and it feels a bit loose. It's not until you try to do some lateral movement that it will start to give you problems, but good for Jay being able to get out there and contribute. Well, with a runner aboard in the nine spot at the plate, and then back to the top of the shop where virtually all of their production has been certainly in the last few days you got to take a shot here at getting this guy over into scoring position or maybe even get a pair of runners aboard for Tyler Wynott, Jason Sanford and Nick Shales Swing and a miss by Duffy. Knee didn't seem to bother him there. Now it's his front leg, is it not? It's his left leg, is that right? Uh, it's his left leg, but again, going forward and backwards probably doesn't give him a lot of pain. It's when you do your side-to-side -side stuff that your knee tends to lock up. Off the plate from Colin Walsh. Two balls, two strikes. Jay Duffy pinch hitting here in the bottom of the fifth inning. The Mastodons trailing one to nothing and swinging a foul back. First base coach is out to whisper in the ear of Jonah Wright over on first base. And again, just off the corner, three balls, two strikes. So Duffy has worked himself into a full count. One down here in the inning in the fifth. The winner of this game gets to play for gold. The loser will settle for bronze. Swing and a miss by Duffy down on strikes. Good pitch there by Colin Walsh out on the outside corner. Looked like Colin Walsh took a little off that pitch and Duffy not able to make the adjustment. So good on Colin Walsh and good on Ryan Kirk for teaming up to sit down Jay Duff Duffy. Tyler, why not to the plate? A long, loud fly ball in the first and a hard single in the third. This is the guy that you want at the plate if you're the Mastodons right now. Certainly this part of the order. Looked like a pretty good pitch from our vantage point, but didn't get the call. Unless you're against the middle of the plate, but all right. <laughs> and that one is off the dish as well. So 3-0 and to Tyler Wynott. Jason Sanford on deck, swinging a couple of big pieces of carbon fiber. And there's a called strike on the inside corner. Three and one now to Why Not. No wind to speak of at this particular moment. A 
upstairs, chasing upstairs for strike two. That was ball four. So a full count on why not. Jonah Wright out at first base. Two out here, bottom of the fifth. On the move, swing and a miss. Tyler Why Not chases two straight balls well out of the zone, and the threat is extinguished. So a genetics discussion here in the booth and who got the short end of the ugly stick here. I'm not going to answer that question for anybody, but it is 789 for the Kelly's Pub coming up. Steven Strap. Mark Lewis and Eddie Heffer and the scheduled batters for the Bulldogs clinging, I think, Lance, to this one nothing lead. Well, they've had their opportunities, and really their lead should be a lot larger than it is right now with one run. And you figure that that bodes well for the Mastodons, who really haven't played that well here in this ball game, but they're still in it, trailing by only one. Called a strike on that infamous corner, which is the outside corner to lefties. And Strap is going to go have a stroll and take a long look back at the umpire. Well, that's the pitch that he struck out on in the fourth inning. Got caught looking. There were two pitches in that at bat. Both the same. Both he felt were outside. Change up. And I guess the count is probably what it should be then. They're showing 3-0 and on the board, but it's 2-1. and one. Swing and a miss there by Strap. That should make it 2-2. Two and two. That's what I've got, at least mentally. And then, indeed, that's confirmed by our home plate umpire. Two balls, two strikes. Strap came in hotter than a pistol. And this one is flared out to short left. Nick Shales will range two steps out onto the grass and make the easy catch for the first out of the inning. You looked at Strap's body language. He already appeared defeated after that call on the outside corner. Did never seem to really recover as he was up there and just managed a little bit of a pop-up to short. Yeah, that really just seemed to take him out of the at bat, that first called strike. Mark Lewis struck out in the first and walked in the fourth. A hard-earned walk by Mark Lewis in the fourth. Downstairs from Schofield. Oh, no. 
Eddie Heffern is on deck again. Looks like he's practicing his slap bunts over there in the on deck circle. Don't know too many guys that practice that. But okay, if well you'll you'll see him down here in the left side of your monitor. Now he's swinging away, but he had the hands separated and was practicing that slap swing a little bit earlier. 3 and 0 oh to Mark Lewis and the strike zone is temporarily abandoned Justin Schofield here. And Mark Lewis is going to wait for some confirmation. I think he thought it was a strike, but I guess his opinion doesn't really matter because he gets first base. No, I'm sure he's not going to argue too loud about <laughs> burning himself a walk, but I think he was frozen there thinking that he was going to have to see another pitch. And Yeah, usually when they're that close, they get called automatically at a 3-0 and count. Ian Donnelly Archibald will have a chat about that down at first base. So Eddie Hefferin steps in again. Eddie's got the lone RBI in this game right now. A sack fly in the fourth inning with the bases loaded produced a run. Archibald is in on the move as Hefferin shows bunt, pulls it back for ball one. Corners crashing from the Mastodons. It was an 0-2 pitch that Hefferin hit out to left field, too. Yeah, because we thought it was an awfully sweet 0-2 pitch from Schofield. Well, it was indeed that. And trying to bunt, or at least showing bunt again, but pulls it back for ball two. Running out of available fence room here at Pepperall Field. There's a few spots down Farrell territory along uh, the outfield fence towards right and a little bit in the left center gap. But that's about it as the crowd keeps streaming in here. Swing and a miss by Eddie Hefferin getting the green light at 2-0. Well, Heffer not able to zone in on a really good pitch there. You see he's deep in the batter's box, and that may give you that split-second extra time, but doesn't allow you to compensate for that drop ball. And back to the bunt and pulls this one back, and Donnelly Archibald throws his arms up in frustration, and Justin Schofield is going to come all the way in, literally to home plate, to inquire about the location of that pitch. And now he's going to have some words over his shoulder and a couple of more for good measure. Well, sometimes you got to make a house call, and that apparently what Schofield did. He wasn't going to wait for a conference in the circle. Well, he's just put on a mile and a half right there. He came all the way into the plate. Now he's all the way out to second base. Well, That's nope. a day's exercise for Scof. <laughs> Well, I wasn't sure if they were going to make a change and Shales was going to come in and throw and Scope was going to play short, but I'm going to leave that one to you. You guys are teammates, so I will let Scope handle you on his own time. <laughs> I'll probably hear about that one, I'm sure. <laughs> Blair Sepford continues to make friends and keep them. <laughs> Three and two to Eddie Hefferin. Only been five pitches in this at bat. It feels like 15. Swing and a miss. Down goes Eddie. Out of all of that, he ran up and tried to bunt on every single ball in the at bat. But for every strike, it was a swinging strike. So I, I'm not sure what the coaching philosophy was there. They had it on, they took it off, they had it on, they took it off. Well, uh, judging by the way that went, I think Heffern was pretty much on his own. Not quite sure if he was taking signs or what he was taking. But the bottom line is, is that he did a lot of guessing up there. Hence the reason he's doing a lot of sitting now. 
two out for Colin Walsh at the plate. And there's a called strike, and that's going to cause Colin Walsh to bend back. Well, if Colin Walsh was getting those calls, he probably wouldn't react like that. But he certainly hasn't gotten anything on that outside corner to righties. He's been begging for it, and he steps up and unfortunately has to see one and now two strikes in the hole chasing after that pitch and and again as you said 0 and 2 now on Colin Walsh and and it's you know it's amazing how one call can change the complexion of the at bat and we saw it with Steven Strap we see here with Colin Walsh can they recover from that first pitch Not sure if Mark Lewis was on the move or if he was just getting a pretty good jump. It was a hell of a bluff. I don't know that Mark Lewis is a candidate to steal a base off of Jason Sanford, maybe by surprise. I don't know. We'd have to call in our resident expert, Mike Power, and see what he has to say. This one is poked foul down the right side. He's got the... uh, He's got the running clock on almost all these hitters, certainly the local guys. Still 0-2 on Colin Walsh. Colin singled leading off the game off of Kyle Crawford, then popped up. The ground ball off of Schofield to end the fourth inning. Now here in the sixth. The one-out walk to Mark Lewis is still at first. This one is down and in. Upstairs, they're going to ask, is he able to hold it back? Yes, he was able to, says our first base umpire, Earl Chesley. Change up and lift it out over the head of Shales. Mark Lewis is going to try to go coast to coast. He will standing up. And a good at bat there by Colin Walsh as he recovers from that 0-2 count to keep his team in the inning. And Mark Mark Lewis is going to go home. The question was by the infield that he missed second base. Is the play live? Is it dead? Time somewhere was called, and the home plate umpire is saying he called time. Lewis, again, is going to walk home and touch the plate just for good measure, just in case he'll go stand on the plate now. Nick Shales is insistent that Mark Lewis missed second base and is pointing at some footprints in the ground for proof. Hard to do if, well, it's easy if no one had been standing at second base at all, all game. You could probably (laughs) refer to the footprints, but for Nick Shales to be able to distinguish one cleat mark from the other, I'm not quite sure if he's CSI blessed or not, but I don't think we've got time for all that. And I think the bottom line is Lewis should be at third and Walsh at first with Evely coming up. Well, Jeff Evely will step into the back of that right side batter's box and the foot almost in behind home plate. And that one is down low from Schofield ball one. His foot is almost even with the catcher's glove. And I mean, you can't go any any further back he goes, he'll be in the stands. Outside from Schofield, 2-0 and to Jeff Evely. 0 for 3 on the day, a couple of strikeouts sandwiched around a ground ball. And again, the Kelly's Pub Bulldogs threaten with runners on the corners. And a chopper foul at the plate, dead ball. 
Well, if you're Kelly's Pub, you the thing you really want here is you want some insurance. You don't want to really go into the final, having to get the final six outs with just a one-run lead. You put up another run, and you really put the pressure on the Mastodons, and I think that's what the mindset has to be here for Kelly's. Swing and a miss by Evely. They've left nine guys aboard to date. The only guy to get a run across was Eddie Hefferin with a sack fly to score Daniel Dalton. That was back in the fourth inning. Upstairs and chasing after it was Evely and has fouled this one back out of play as that was going to be a ball, but inexplicably going after that pitch way up and out of the zone. Well, it was a check swing. I've never seen a guy check swing with a pitch around his eyes and manage to foul it off. That's something I haven't seen before. So Evely seems to be all over the strike zone, choked way up on the bat. So. Ground ball to Harvey. He's going to have to hurry to get Evely. Good throw. Stretched by Archibald. They get him. And Kelly's Pub have now left either 10 or 11 on base. We'll double check that one for you to confirm. But they still lead, still cling to this 1-0 lead. Off to the bottom of the sixth we go. for the Mastodons and Lance. They've got to feel very fortunate they're still in this game, only trailing one to nothing. They're a bloop and a blast away from taking the lead. No, and it's uh, funny how that's worked because Kelly's Pub has pretty much dominant, has been dominant in the first six innings here, and a chance though for the Mastodons, one swing of the bat to get back in this ball game. They're not really out, just trailing by one. Well, and how many times have we seen this over the years where a team leads for the bulk of the game, only for the trailing team to come back and score a couple late, take the lead, and then hold on for what really would be considered to be a stolen win. Well, sometimes you like to pull that carpet out from teams. And Jason Sanford flares this out to right. Andrew Wade will take a step over to his right and secure that away for the leadoff out. Sanford got a good piece of that, but not enough, and certainly not into either gap, so an easy play out there for Andrew Wade. Nick Shales, two strikeouts on the game. You know he really wants to make up for that. Likely hasn't seen a lot of Colin Walsh over the season. They're going to ask. No, says Earl Chesley.
So Nick would have seen uh, Colin Walsh at least once at the IC World Tournament. They're going to ask again on uh, Nick Shales. And no, two balls. Nick, I think, gave a bit of an eye roll there at the plate. And I'm sure they'll ask again about that one if they didn't get a called strike. And no, we are going to ask this time. And yes, we get the response this time to the enthusiastic cheer from the crowd. Perhaps a bit of a Bronx cheer. And did he go around here? Yes, he did. We're not even going to ask on that one, although Nick Shields would like him to. And it's two and two. I didn't think he went around on that. I thought that was a close pitch, but that he never broke the the plane with the bat. But Well, he certainly started the swing, and I guess uh, the obvious question would have been, did he go far enough for the strike? The home plate umpire, I guess maybe after three straight uh, checks with his partner, decided to make a call on his own. Two balls, two strikes, one down here in the sixth inning. This is the spot where they've got to get the job done for the Mastodons. And here's a little punch on the infield, way up in the air. Evely, one-handed, will pull that one down for the second out. Very casual by Evely. I've seen that ball spin and pop out of a glove. You don't use two hands. You're risking it, and it would be a shame if in the sixth inning you allowed a base runner just from being careless. But a good job by Evely, nonetheless, to show sure hands and corralling that pop fly. Donnelly Archibald, a ground out and a fly out. This one backhanded by Evely. Plant sets, throws, and got him. Good play there by Jeff Evely. A 1-2-3 inning for Colin Walsh and the Kelly's Pop Bulldogs. Another opportunity for them to try and extend this lead coming up as we go to top of the seventh. Meeting on the mound for the Mastodons as they will face Matthew Waugh, Ryan Kirk, and Daniel Dalton. 3-4-5, the boppers for Kelly's Pub Bulldogs. And Lance, uh, a great job there by Colin Walsh to shut down the meat of the order for the Mastodons that last inning. Well, we're talking about the offense of these Bulldogs and squandered opportunities and have forgotten a bit about the outstanding job that Colin Walsh has done. Coming off a five-inning game already, he's here in the distance and he has been pretty strong considering he has kept this Mastodon's lineup at bay and off balance and you got to give him some credit for what he's done and one of the reasons they're able to cling to this one run lead. Matthew Waugh still not happy with his at bats here I don't think other than that single he th had a notion to slap that one and kind of give a flick of the bat afterwards as he fouled it off to the screen. And this one down low for a ball. One ball, one strike. 
Justin Schofield, much like Kyle Crawford, has worked into and out of trouble all afternoon for the Mastodons. Here's a chopper on the infield. Stewart gathers that up, and he throws out Matthew Waugh for the second time today. Well, i got to give Stewart credit. He certainly kept his body in front of that one. It was going to be a tough hop, and sometimes when it's an in-between hop like that was, you're not quite sure what you're going to get. You've got a very dry, hard infield, and with that ball and its top spin, you're not quite sure how it's going to jump. Ryan Kirk, a couple of ground outs, but more importantly, had a base hit his last trip, ripping one back up the middle. And fouls this one off at the plate. The lone run of this game, Daniel Dalton singled, leading off the fourth inning and advancing around to third and scoring on a line drive sack fly by Eddie Hefferin on an 0-2 count, reaching out and pulling one to left field. And a diving catch by Tyler Wynott, but that was enough to score Dalton from third base. That's the only run of the game. Swing and a miss by Kirk. Kelly's Pub have left almost a dozen runners on base over the course of the game. And both of these clubs, no matter what the outcome is, Lance, both of these clubs are going to look back and say, boy, well, this could have been a lot more for us. Well, you're right. In particular, Kelly's Pub, they can certainly shake their head and say, wow, could have put up a number of runs based on the opportunities that presented themselves. But sometimes that's just not the way the game works out. And hats off to Schofield, too. He has kept, you know, the Kelly's Pub. He's gotten the big outs when he's needed to, relied on his defense when he had to, and hence the reason his team's still in the ball game. Fouled off at the plate by Dalton. Daniel's been on base three times, two for three on the game, reaching on a fielder's choice as well. And that Worth K Master is going to be deposited in the basket for potential future use. One ball, one strike to the second baseman for Kelly's Pub at the plate. And chases that rise ball upstairs, fouls that back out of the zone, or out of the park, rather. The wind has picked up a little bit again, kind of blowing left to right at the moment. That seems to have been the prevailing wind for most of the week downstairs. Two balls, two strikes now. People continue to stream into Caribou Park. You look over and here comes another couple of families into the park for the championship game coming up right after this one. And this one is punched down the right side and just going to fall foul. Well, Dalton did what he was supposed to do with an outside pitch, and that's go with it. And if he was able to keep that ball on the other side of the chalk line, he would have been in for at least a double. I'll raise you a triple on that one. I think with his speed, he easily gets to third. I wouldn't argue with you either. Swing and a miss. That one is up above the eyes. And for only the second time this afternoon, the Kelly's Pub Bulldogs go three up, three down. We're going to go to the bottom of the seventh inning. Last call for the Mastodons. Time to put up or time to go home.
Leading off for the Mastodons in the bottom of the seventh inning, the center fielder number 44, Joel Eisenhorn. Joel Eisner has been hitting balls hard all week for the East Hans Mastodons. If they want to stay alive in this tournament, they're going to need him to set the table for Patrick Stewart, Jonah Wright, Aaron Harvey, and it's going to have to be the bottom of the order for the Mastodons to get the job done against Colin Walsh and the Kelly's Pub Bulldogs right here, right now. Bottom of the seventh inning and a called strike to open up the inning on Big Joel Eisner. Well, now's the time. You've got to do everything in your power to try and scratch out a run here and extend this ball game at the very least. Outside and called a strike on that outside corner. Colin Walsh has been wanting that outside corner all afternoon and gets one there on Joel Eisner. They go a little further out and waving at it, helping them out. Joel Eisner down on strikes here to start the seventh inning. Certainly not the at-bat that you would expect from Eisner or ho hope for if you're one of the Mastodons, but Colin Walsh has been good, real good, and he's looking to close the door here on these Mastodons and punch their ticket to the gold medal final. Two outs to get. Patrick Stewart. He laces this one past a diving Jeff Evely. First pitch swinging Patrick Stewart aboard with the game-tying run now at first base. Well, you couldn't get a run without a base runner, and there you go. So the Mastodons again with that base runner, and now a little bit of hope as there might be some time for for a change or two but well I'm thinking pinch runner and it looks like it's Andy Chase who is going to come on to run for Joel Eisner they'll get the fist bump in front of the mount and Andy Chase represents a little bit more speed over there for the Mastodons Andy Chase number two is now running for Jonah Wright number 22 Jonah Wright will be coming to the plate Chase running for Patrick Stewart. Upstairs, chasing way upstairs. 0 and 2 on Jonah Wright. Singled in his last trip, ground out before that. Inside, did that hit him? It did. And down to first base goes Jonah Wright. 0-2, oh and, and he comes inside and hits Jonah Wright. Boy, oh boy, that uh, will make things even more interesting here in the bottom of the seventh inning. And when have we not had just a straightforward seventh inning, Lance? It's been like that all year long, no matter what tournament we've been at. No, and the drama continues. Certainly not what you wanted if you're Colin Walsh to hit that batter and give him that free pass. And now you're working with putting the winning run on base here and now you've got to face Aaron Harvey. Aaron Harvey has been hot and cold in this tournament. Sorry, pinch hitter. I was uh, only seeing part of the numbers there. It's a pinch hitter. Darcy Gillis is at the plate for Aaron Harvey. Well spotted there by our broadcast partner Chris Abbott. And this one is lifted up to center field. Matthew Waugh stumble coming out of the gate. Still able to make a basket catch on the run. Good job, Matty Waugh. There were a lot of people holding their breath considering everyone in that Kelly's Pub dugout and on the field. But a good recovery from Waugh. And like I said, that's what you expect from a guy like Matty Waugh. Wow. He blew a tire out there and left. He's going to check his starting spot right now. He went down to one knee and was still able to accelerate and come on and make a basket catch at the waist. Two down now in the inning and 
Duffy, who stayed in the game, they I guess they never re-entered him, obviously, because Cody Anthony was a designated player, so it's not like he would need to go out to the field to play defense. So it will come down to the shoulders and the injured knee of Jay Duffy for the East Hans Mastodons. Chases upstairs, strike one. Duffy came on to hit in the fifth and went down swinging. Upstairs for ball one, and racing over to second base was Daniel Dalton to get the pinch runner Andy Chase back to the bag to keep him close. Called strike in the outside corner, strike two. It looks a lot like Bethlehem right here, right now. There is no room at the inn for anybody else here in this park. All the room on the fence is taken. The crowd comes to its feet, looking for an all-Newfoundland final. Ground ball, Dalton fumbles it. The backhand toss out at first base, and we're going to get the all-Newfoundland final indeed. It was in doubt there for the moment. Jay Duffy went in with the head first slide at first and he looks like he's damaged something else. He's down on all fours and it's just now barely getting to his feet. I think he did some more damage to that knee. But Dalton was able to go get that ball and make a backhand toss to just get Day Jay Duffy at first base. Well, a good ball game, and I think the team that dominated throughout was the recipient of the win in the Bulldogs, and congratulations to them as they will go home with no less than a silver medal here as should be a good one brewing here for the final. The handshake line, stay with us as we will be bringing you that championship game approximate start time, probably about 4.45 local time here in St. John's, Newfoundland. Coming right back up, the gold medal game. 